news of murdering his own father, a well-known bar owner. We'll have the latest. More controversy surrounding the recently approved fire fees for rural California residents. Why the money won't actually be used for fighting fires. And Wall Street's wild week continued today as stocks rebounded once again. We'll have the latest on the markets. Good evening, I'm Alan Marston. And I'm Kira Clapper. NBC 24 Action News at 5 starts now. You're watching Action News at 5 on NBC 24. Live, local, late breaking. We are learning more about a Megalia shooting that left a man dead and his son behind bars. Action News reporter Brian Callahan has been following the story for the past two days and joins us now with the latest. Brian. Alan, Kira, Mike McCarty's friends say he was a great man who loved his family, loved his bar, and loved his community. Always trying to take care of people and working like mad and taking care of his whole family. He did everything he could. Wayne Stout says Michael McCarty was a great father who loved his three children. That's why the news of his death came as such a shock. The 55-year-old was found dead inside his Megalia home just before noon Wednesday from an apparent gunshot wound. His 31-year-old son, Christopher, was later arrested for the murder. Uh, we're looking into the relationship that they had, uh, and we're talking to some more people, but as far as um, any specific incident that might have set this off, that's still under investigation. The news of McCarty's death was still spreading throughout the community, where he worked as a real estate salesman and part-time bartender at the King's Tavern, which he also owned. There was, they didn't go by that. We didn't, we didn't talk. He had not only me, but he had tons of friends in the, in the community. He was a well-known, well-known, well-respected man. As McCarty's friends and family struggle to cope with the loss for now, they know they will never completely move past the tragic event. For just a minute, you think, oh, yeah, I'll talk to him when he gets in, and then um, you realize that's, that day's not coming. It's over. Yesterday's gone. Christopher McCarty is currently being held in the Butte County Jail without bail. Now, I did a quick search of his criminal record this afternoon and found he has an outstanding warrant for failure to appear on drug-related charges. Now, he's expected to be arraigned tomorrow on the murder charges. For Action News, I'm Brian Callahan. Thank you, Brian. An Action News update now on yesterday's crash outside Oroville that killed one person and sent another to the hospital. Authorities now say the driver was under the influence of drugs. 52-year-old Rick Roberts of Paradise was reportedly speeding on Coal Canyon Road when he drifted into some gravel, lost control, and hit a tree. The passenger, 47-year-old Kimberly Scheller of Paradise, was killed. Roberts was critically injured. He now faces DUI charges. Two men are under arrest for robbing a Red Bluff gas station. It happened about 11.30 last night on the Valero at the Valero on Sutter Street. Police say Anthony Arviso and Billy German were armed with knives when they walked into the store and demanded money. Witnesses say they saw them running from the store towards I-5. Police arrested Arviso after spotting him trying to hide. German was arrested a short time later at his home. The money and most of the stolen items were recovered. Also in Red Bluff, a man is arrested after leading officers on a short chase through city streets. Officers were called last night to the 400 block of Wiltsey Road for a report of a man with a gun. When they arrived, the suspect, 28-year-old Francisco Farias, took off in his car. Police gave chase and the pursuit ended a few minutes later when Farias pulled over and surrendered. Police found a gun that was thrown from the car during the chase. Farias was arrested on multiple charges, including having a gun, evading police, and having stolen property. Authorities arrested eight people during a raid into Hama County. They say they were trying to disguise a commercial marijuana grow. The suspects, including these three Red Bluff residents, were arrested at a home on Pascanta Road. Officers seized more than 700 plants that were being grown in greenhouses and were marked with medical marijuana recommendations. All eight suspects were booked into the Tehama County Jail for cultivation and possession of marijuana for sale. In Trinity County, a marijuana bus lands three people behind bars. Authorities served a search warrant at the home on Barker Valley, uh, the area of Hay Fork. They seized more than 2,100 plants growing in 22 greenhouses. Donald Battaglieri, Paul Jagger, and Paige McDonald were all arrested. The deputies are still looking for the property owner, William Barsanti. Anyone with information regarding his whereabouts is asked to call the Trinity County Sheriff's Office. In other news now, now that the city of Chico has updated its long-term general plan for growth, more detailed zoning changes are in the works. The question is, will where you live be affected by some of the future land use changes that could happen during the next several months? 
That's why the city has developed an interactive website that allows you to track the planning process and see just how your neighborhood might be affected. For more information about city's rezoning process, go to our website and click on news links. Chico State officials have moved up the start of construction on a new parking structure. It's to be built at the corner of 2nd Street and Normal Avenue and will boost campus parking by 220 spaces. The structure will replace a single level parking lot currently at the site, which means the loss of about 100 spaces during the coming school year. Demolition work will start immediately. Well, the good news is that it's starting sooner right now, um, and that means that there will be less disruption in the long run because the project can happen and be completed over one academic year rather than parts of two. Mm -hmm. Information about parking options is available on the university website. Still, there is sure to be an impact on parking downtown and in surrounding neighborhoods. The new parking structure should be complete by September of next year. Governor Jerry Brown recently signed off on implementing a controversial new annual fire fee for California's rural residents. Now there's renewed controversy over the language of that bill and where the money that's collected will actually be going. Action News reporter Court Clopping spoke with state fire officials and co Hassett residents to find out why so many oppose these fees. Court. Kira, people I spoke with today say they don't have a problem with the fee if the money is spent in the right way, but they believe paying the fee the way it's worded right now will simply be a waste of money. State responsibility areas make up 31 million acres of land in California, and a new fee being assessed by the state means up to $150 will be charged to every residence in those areas. The controversy has already emerged in the wording of the fee. When the governor signed the, the bill, he immediately saw that there were some issues and one of those one of those addressed the main issue that many have with the fee is that the funds are only meant to cover fire prevention not actual firefighting fire prevention is the work done before a fire starts that could be brush clearance that could be educating homeowners on what to do to make sure a fire doesn't start but Cohasset residents like Maggie Crable say the money should be spent on protection they recognized we had a need the state's budget couldn't afford to fill and we're willing to chip in to protect our own property. But we don't need more education. We need more firemen on the ground. Other residents agree, going as far as saying paying for prevention is nothing but a waste of money. People in this community are not going to attend meetings where they're taught how to, how to prevent a fire. They need to have the protection. They need to have the trucks coming up. But state representatives contend the plan was to use the money for protection and are now calling for amendments. As the bill is written right now may not be how the actual amended bill uh, turns out once homeowners are actually assessed that fee. And Berlant says the biggest need is a change of wording that would also include defining where the funds go, who is assessed the fee and how much each residence would pay. He says the fees will go a long way in keeping funding levels where they need to be. When the economy goes down, so does the general fund and so do programs out of the general fund. So by moving us to a special fund out of the general fund, it creates stability for fire protection. Governor Brown's office released a statement today supporting changes in the wildfire fee. Experts say the fee should bring in $200 million annually. Court Clopping, NBC24, Action News. Thank you, Court. The California Supreme Court has decided to hear a case filed by community redevelopment agencies which are fighting a provision of the state budget that threatens their survival. The court also issued an order preventing the state from moving ahead on its plan to eliminate redevelopment agencies unless they agree to make payments to local school districts. Last month, the Reading City Council voted to pay nearly $6 million to the state in an effort to keep its redevelopment agency alive. The court order will create more budget headaches for the state because the legislature and Governor Jerry Brown are relying on that money to help save $1.7 billion. The court says it will decide by mid-January whether the state can eliminate the agencies. It's time now for weather. Temperatures are on the rise. I feel like I could feel it mm -hmm. today. For the latest on the conditions, we check in with Chris Kuiper in the AccuWeather Center. Chris. Yeah, but nothing too terribly much, and that's the great news. Maybe a little bit warmer tomorrow, but overall, the weekend looking pretty stable as far as our temperatures go. Pretty much what we expect to see in the month of August. Current temperatures running anywhere from 92 in Chico and Willows to 97 in Redding. We've got 95 as our current temperature in Red Bluff and in the mountains, 80s to about 90 in Weaverville and Hayfork. Looking at tomorrow, it does get just a tiny bit warmer. 72 at 8 o'clock in the morning, so still comfortable as we start off our Friday morning. By 
by the midday hour, we'll be in the upper 80s, so certainly heating up rather quickly out there. And then we're going to finish off our afternoon, maybe just a degree or two warmer than we had today. We'll see middle and upper 90s. I took the triple digits out of the forecast for tomorrow, but it is going to be close in a few spots. There is a significant cool down coming in the extended forecast, and I'll talk all about that and the meteor shower going on in just a bit. Chris. The financially strapped U.S. Postal Service is considering cutting as many as 120,000 jobs, facing a second year of losses totaling $8 billion or more. The agency also wants to pull its workers out of the retirement and health benefits plans covering federal workers and set up its own systems. Congressional approval would be needed for either step, and both could be expected to face severe opposition from postal unions, which have contracts that ban layoffs. The post office has cut 110,000 jobs over the last four years and is currently engaged in eliminating 7,500 administrative staff positions. But the loss of mail to the Internet and the decline in advertising caused by the recession have rocked the agency. Postal officials are considering closing thousands of post offices nationwide, including locations in Artois, Costella, Hat Creek, Sterling City, and Pascenta. Still to come, the roller coaster ride continued today on Wall Street as stocks rebounded from yesterday's losses. We'll have the latest and look at what's behind the wild market swing.